Hello again! Are you all ready for our first lesson? Today we're going to visit Bull Trout Billy, a specialist at the Alberta Lake Management Society, to find out more about shorelines. So put away those smartphones and let's take a dive into waterfront living. Hello, my name is Bulltrout Billy and I'm a biologist at Alms. Alms is a nonprofit that promotes understanding and comprehensive management of lakes in Alberta. I spend a lot of my working hours near shorelines and often have to deal with their numerous distinctive qualities. Shorelines are unique from other natural areas in many ways. First off, shorelines are physically unique. They often slope and due to this are often on the receiving end of the drainage and seepage that flows from uphill properties. Additionally, the wetter soils are often compacted by disturbances that occur within 30 feet of the water. These disturbances can consist of construction of houses, grazing of large animals, or even boat access points. This creates a tendency for erosion as the effects of little vegetation, dry soil, as well as wind and ice over exposed stretches of water all combine to damage the banks. A great way to limit the effects of runoff, drainage, and seepage is to add a buffer zone between your property and the water body. This will allow for shoreline restoration to take effect. Secondly, shorelines have a differing climate. The dynamic nature of lake water levels create microclimates. These lead to temperature inversions and unusual frost patterns which result in varying weather effects compared to mainland ecosystems. If a shoreline property owner wants to save heating costs, he or she can plant native trees in between their home and the lake to protect from chilling lake breezes. Thirdly, shorelines contain a large amount of wildlife. In fact, over 80% of all birds, reptiles, and amphibians utilize shoreline areas sometime during their life. Also, four at-risk amphibians and 22 at-risk birds and reptiles utilize shorelines. Additionally, they not only benefit land animals, but they also help protect the quality of aquatic habitat for fish species in the water bodies. A better management practice would be to consult with the alms to see whether any of your shoreline activities can cause damage to fish and wildlife habitat. Lastly, shorelines are governed by a wide variety of laws. Federal laws, such as the Federal Fisheries Act, provincial laws, such as the Water Act and Public Lands Act, historic common laws, such as the Riparian Rights Law, and even municipal laws, such as local zoning bylaws. Each of these laws require citizens to exercise their due diligence in the management of shoreline properties. Not doing so can result in legal repercussions. The interesting thing about shorelines is that they are legally dynamic. This is just a fancy word for saying that the laws change dependent on the nature of the shoreline. The legally dynamic part refers to how the high water line is a representation of a variable boundary. Well, that sure was a lot of information. I'll be sending you back to Lacey soon so you can ace your quiz and move on to the next lesson. I might see you there. Bye everyone.